Hello, this is Telomere, and welcome to another Redstone Scholar tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a redstone build that will make you diamonds by turning your mob grinder into a kiosk, selling 30 minute passes to use your mob grinder. In demonstrations, to use this critter, you just go in into this dropper, you're going to put in a single diamond, and it's going to shoot out a book right there. That book is going to be, and I spelled it wrong, <laughs> a 30 minute token. By being a copy, it cannot be reproduced. We're going to go on to, into here, and we're going to throw that book right into this dropper. By putting it in there, you're going to see the door shuts, and this pops open. This will remain open for a total of 30 minutes. The moment that the timer ends, this piston right in front of us here is going to push us on out and the gate's going to close. Just like that. Oh man, is that close. Now before we begin, you will see now on your screen a list of all the items you will need to make this redstone build. Alright, let's get started. To begin, we'll be starting off by making an item filter. You're just going to do that by placing a single block here, filling out to the sides, up here, and along here that basic shape and destroy that block right there in the center. From there you're going to throw down a comparator and then a line of redstone dust going down here, a redstone repeater going right there, and a redstone torch right there. Going out from here you're just going to go and put a chest right here, you can delete this one right there, and you're going to put a hopper pointing on into the chest and then another hopper pointing this way as well. You got to make sure that they are pointing this way or the item filter will not work. Next, we'll just fill this up with items. We're gonna go and put in five in each slot and then one more stick right at the end. This will allow for exactly one diamond to be remaining in here. There will also be one diamond in here and you will see the final diamond that will pop out into the chest right there. So let's just throw in three just so that you can see what it looks like. And there you have it. One gets always stuck in here. You can't do anything about that. And you've got the final block of diamond right there. Next, you're going to put a dropper right on top of there. That is where you can go and put your diamonds in. Or the player can also, if you want to leave that open, just toss them right in there. And that will work fine as well. Now we're going to take a signal off of this one right here, that redstone torch. And we're just going to build up a block right there. I'm going to stick a repeater down coming out there. And you can see it's pulled up the signal. And we're going to go and put a redstone torch right there as well with a dropper on top of it. This is where your tokens are going to be placed. So let's just spill her on up. And just to show that it is in fact working, let's put a diamond on in. There you have it. Now this part of the circuit is complete. Let's move on to the part of the circuit that activates the pistons. To begin, we're just going to point the cursor right here into that comparator and then we're going to hold down shift and right click to get that piston right there. You're going to put a block right underneath that piston. That's important for later. Now you're going to go and put two blocks out right there like this and you can delete that one. You need a redstone block right there, just a temporary block right here and you're going to put a block on this side and on this side and then up one like that and then you can delete your temporary blocks. Now you're going to throw down a repeater right here and right here. You'll notice they immediately light up because of that redstone block. And we're going to put a single iron door. Now just a little tip for you guys. If you move your cursor to the right side of the block, it's going to put the hinges on this side. And if you move on to this side, it'll put the hinges on that side. Now you're going to put a row of three blocks coming out from that repeater right there and one block on top of the repeater. You'll next put a line of redstone going from up here and on down, and then you're going to put a sticky piston right here, and then next you're going to put a temporary block here, another block, and then another temporary block, and then up one. You can delete this block and that one. Next you're just throwing down a repeater right there, and another sticky piston sitting right on top of that block. Next we're going to put a stair block here and a solid block right there. Excellent, so we're done the gate aspects of the build. Now let's just throw down a glowstone block right here. That's to light up the build, but it is also because it is not a solid block. When we put a chest underneath here later, it will be able to open. Very important if you want to access all your tokens. Now we're going to be making another filter, and this is to filter in the proper tokens. So you're going to place a hopper pointing into that glowstone. 
I'm just gonna put down a temporary block and another hopper pointing in this direction. From there, let's go and throw down another chest directly underneath there. And then next, we're gonna go and put some blocks going down here, another temporary block, a block here, block here, and another block right there. And you can destroy that one in the center. Once again, you're just gonna throw down a comparator and then another line of redstone dust, and then a repeater going up right there into this block, and then a redstone torch on the face of that block right there. Now our filter is pretty much complete. You just want to throw and throw a dropper off the top of here, and that is where, once again, the tokens will be placed. Now we're moving on to the clock. We're going to go and place a temporary block right here, and then we're going to put another block right there. You can delete that one. And on top of there, just going to put an oak log and then another one. Just delete that one there. You don't need it. And then another block here and another block there. From there, you're going to put a redstone torch base of that block right there. And then another block in front of that one. Now from here, we are going to be making the first etho hopper timer block. I'm just going to put a row of four blocks and then up by one. And then you're going to put a redstone dust there and there. And then two hoppers pointing into each other. Next, you're going to have a comparator pointing into those blocks and a sticky piston. Just look for the hitbox of that redstone dust and you right click while holding down shift and it'll pop on out both sides. And finally, what's going to link this one over to the other hopper clock? We're going to put one comparator coming out right there. And then you're going to go and put the redstone block in there. And finally, let's populate this with sticks. Here's your items on in. I'm just going to quickly make the next eat the hopper clock. Now there is one major difference in this particular clock is that instead of having the redstone block on this side, you're going to put it on this side. If it's on this side instead, it can cause problems. So this right here is about four minutes and a bit of time, and this is going to multiply it up. You throw in eight sticks, that should result in about 30 minutes of time. Finally for this bit here, we're going to hook this up to this block here by going and putting a block here. And then another sticky piston pointing this direction into this oak lock. Now for the oak leaves. Just going to throw down a temporary block right there. And then we're going to put a line of leaves. Six in total. One, two, three. There's three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to put an observer at the end. And then another three observers pointing into this gold block right there. Now just coming back to this filter here. Because I, in fact, forgot to go and fill in this filter. We're going to throw in three sticks in each slot. Then we're going to put another three in here just for those. And this is going to allow for exactly one book to remain in there. All right, now that we have the build complete, I've decreased the clock here down to around 10, maybe 20 seconds. And we're just going to go through the whole procedure before we go and start putting everything in place to cover everything up. So we're going to toss in a single diamond. And there we go. We have our book. And we're going to go and wander over into here, into the chamber where we're going to be killing our mobs or grinding them or whatever the method may be. And let's toss in, not the original, but we're going to throw in our copy. There you see it has popped out, and which reminds me that we do in fact need to place a block right here. Otherwise you're just going to fall on right down. And so you sit here waiting for your mobs to come on in and whatever else. When that timer ends, once again, this block is going to push you back out and that one is going to go in place and so would end the time you have. So now that we know that it is fully functioning and doing exactly what it needs to be, let's start filling it in. First, you're going to go and put down a steer block right here in order so that you can still open up this chest and access your diamonds. I recommend putting also some sort of different block right here just to indicate that this is where you're going to be expecting the book to come on out. And we're going to also toss down some blocks around here, around the dropper, to prevent that book from flying out the edges. Now let's fill in the rest. And just as a reminder, do not block this right here. If you do put a block in this, this will break the system and it will not be able to pull the block in or out. Once again, I'm going to use red concrete just to indicate the difference between the area where the player will be and where the mobs will be. So you can put a block up there and up along here and then going up here. And I do recommend also putting in a button right here in case the player needs to leave early. So I just put the button right there and that will allow that door to be activated even when the farm is on. And that is all there is for the player chamber. You might want to put blocks along here as well. And this is where the grinding area 
will be for the mobs. Now, if you are planning to collect the items that the mobs drop, I would recommend just throwing down a hopper right here, going on into a chest or whatever else. Now, if you are going to go and put water into this area here, it may be a little bit difficult. I would recommend maybe putting a sign right in front of there and maybe even blocking up this side of the water there to prevent the mobs from gathering all into one spot. Because otherwise, you may find yourself with water pouring on inside and pushing you out of the way. Something like that. This is obviously where your mobs are going to be dropping on down. So whatever mob farm that you end up using, just keep in mind, this is where you want your mobs to be gathering or dying in order for you to collect their items or collect their XP. And that is all there is to this mob farm rental kiosk. From what I calculate, this redstone build has about 51, maybe 52 redstone components. I really should give a shout out to Gaming With Rage, which gave me the request for this build. So thank you. And thank you all for watching another video of the Redstone Scholar. So if you liked the video, please do leave a like. And if you want to see more of my stuff and more interesting videos like this, subscribe. See you guys all in another video. Bye.